think everybody's here. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Dima Kumitz. I'm the MSP product manager for OpenDNS, and I'm here talking about Umbrella, our MSP service uh, that provides enterprise-grade malware protection, web filtering, and overall cloud security. Quick overview of the agenda, uh, give a little bit of background on our company, and then I want to really dive right into some of the, the changes in the threat landscape that we're seeing. And this is really meant to give you information to take home, talk to your customers, and also gives me an opportunity to show you some of the things that we're seeing on the back end. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about the service, some of the advantages that we have, how you can roll it out. And if there's time, I'd love to do a demo. If not, we'll be out in the hallway and happy to chat some more. So first of all, um, I know there's some familiar faces here, but how many of you use OpenDNS at home? You use it with a customer or, wow. Okay, so um, thank you very much. Um, OpenDNS, as you're aware, is world's largest internet security network. We have 23 data centers now, resolving 50 billion DNS queries per day. Um, and the number that I'm most proud of, zero downtime since 2006. <laughs> And we do this through BGP routing, any cast IPs, and really by being a company that's built and founded on operational excellence. The service that I'm talking about, Umbrella, combines, as I said, malware protection, botnet containment, web filtering, and we have a reporting integration in ConnectWise to help you see all of that data and make it actionable. So when we look at the threat landscape today, you know, back in the olden days, viruses, things that messed up computer, we've seen this really crazy explosion in both the velocity and pace of change. And the big reason is money. Malware is exploding because now we have liquidity and we have a way to extract money from victims or end users. Um, web money and perfect money are two systems that malware bad actors use to pay each other. Bitcoin, of course, everybody has heard of. And then the green dot money pack prepaid debit cards you see at the grocery store, uh, that's become an easy method to have you know, end users who are infected send money back to the hackers for ransomware. Um, at, and all of this has really changed the landscape from being criminal organizations to crime as a service. You now no longer need to have one gang, one group that's doing everything. You can split it up so that there's a person who finds the security exploits in Poland, the guy who does the money somewhere in the UK, and then people who uh, continue to recruit you know, in Ukraine. This means the need for, for uh, a whole organization has changed to just having specialized talent that's distributed. It's more efficient, more dangerous, and it shifted the hacker organization from being scary guys sitting in rooms to any old mob boss who just wants to rent some malware and make some money off of it. So let's talk about that. Cybercrime as a service. So the distribution vector side, you have these things called do-it-yourself exploit kits, DIY kits. This is a forum post advertising one. For $400, you can buy a kit where you copy a, a little snippet of code onto a website, either your own, one you've exploited, um, one you've registered with stolen credit cards, run some Google ads for it, and then what will it do? It'll go through these CVEs, <coughs> pardon me, that means it'll try Java exploits and Adobe exploits in the cheap $400 version. If you buy the $1,000 or $10,000 version, we'll go through zero day exploits in order to do a drive by download and get a user infected. Uh, they're also really nice in that they offer a $50 upgrade little refresh cycle, make it convenient for you. Um, lastly, it offers great reporting, better than all of the enterprise software that I use. <laughs> um, where are the users that I've infected? What are the exploit kits that are, that are doing the best? Uh, or the, the Java versus Adobe, all of these kinds of things. It really means that the hackers can do a good business plan, solid execution strategy, grow as an organization. On the payload side, sorry, I know it's, it's uh, not a great situation, but this is what's happening and what's making it possible for the mob guys to move into electronic crime. So what are they actually installing once you get the, uh, the person compromised and do a drive-by? Well, early days, fake AV, 
We've all dealt with it. It's a pain, but they're either asking for 50 bucks or some time for you guys to run a comprehensive scan, get it off the machine, and the annoyance is gone. Today, we're moving, of course, to CryptoLocker as being the big one. Um, and you've probably all heard about this. 100 hours, now switching to 72 hours, where you have 300 bucks um, to pay to get your data back after it's been encrypted. So what are we seeing in terms of CryptoLocker on the network level? So what CryptoLocker does comes in as an email attachment. You install the executable and then it starts going to 12 to 15 letter domains. And I know it's small print, but there's some examples here like U, U, I, V, T, U, X, et cetera. Very great SEO on those domains. Um, but it goes through a thousand of these a day and it looks for one that's alive. And that's how it gets the encryption key. Once it gets the encryption key, it can start encrypting the hard drive and doing the monetary side. We're seeing these domains switch IPs. Um, on some days, none of them are live. On other days, the domains are live and they're hopping around the internet as servers get taken down. But all it takes is one to get your end user infected, I'm sorry, not infected, encrypted. In terms of the requests, these are in millions, um, just absolutely astounding volume. And yes, each computer is doing 1,000 queries per day plus, but when we're seeing 450 million queries per day that we're blocking, um, absolutely astounding. So rather than going into the science, I'm gonna do a quick live demo here and show you some of the backend data that we have. So bear with me for just one second. All right, so what this is, it's a visual representation of one day's worth of crypto locker traffic. Um, the domains in the outer side of this sort of sphere, those ones are standing standalone and they're really not connected to the other ones. But what we're seeing in this sort of helix path is that each one of these domains are in the same session, they're interrelated and co-occurring with the other ones. So besides us doing DGA analysis and looking for computer generated domains and uh, domains that would be generated by CryptoLocker, we're also doing this guilt by association, which means that even though there may be something new that has come up or another domain that has been associated with it before, we're able to see it as coming up with York's whatever it is and attach it to the chain and therefore block it in the cloud. So let me get out of this and go back to the presentation. Cool. And I mentioned DGA analysis. DGA is algorithmically generated domains. So domains like this that humans would never register themselves. We see them as computer generated. And by seeing those 50 billion queries per day, we're able to say, okay, the learning machines have understood that these ones should be blocked and we're now going to be blocking them for the customers. Crypto locker, cool, containing it, awesome. But what else is out there? The really scary threat to me are the key loggers and backdoors. And it is affecting real businesses. This is an article about a, an escrow firm where just the CFO got infected and uh, all of their money got wired out to China. Once it's in China, it's almost impossible to get it back because of international rules. And these are also available as kits. So Spy I was one of the examples and you can see that they basically you let you exploit a system and then say, grab all the credit cards and you know what, I don't want any junk data so only gave me the credit card numbers with CVV and address. Um, great quality control with these guys. They'll also do other little tricks like they'll look for FTP logins and WordPress logins. So if you manage to compromise somebody who runs a website, you now have credentials to their website and you can continue the cycle, infect others and get more data out of it. Um, also lets you auto uninstall your competition open up VNC remote terminals, um, almost like an evil RMM. It really is. So when you think about SMBs, which is the typical MSP customers, they don't have the security procedures, the awareness in place, which makes them much more vulnerable. They're also being targeted much more. 
which makes them 15 times more likely to be infected. Um, from that perspective, MSPs are the right path to be protecting those customers. And you guys need to be not only educating them, but protecting them from the threats because they're not going to be the ones to do it themselves. So how do you protect customers? And this is where I want to talk about the layered approach. Um, I don't know how many of you are doing a defense in depth strategy, but AV is really just one layer. And according to the analysts, 30 to 50% effective. The cloud solutions like us provide that intelligence and that real time protection to be able to protect the customers in real time from the zero day threats and also reduce your complexity and costs. So umbrella for MSPs, that's the name of our program. And the three value props are decreased costs. Our customers have shown me their connect wise uh, service boards and the hours spent. And they really are seeing 50 to 80% reduction in malware cleanup costs, increased revenue because we do include web filtering in the service, and finally, improve your customer uptime. Um, and really improve retention through the value reports. So on the decrease in cost sides, of course your engineering time is valuable, keeps you from scaling your business, um, also costs you money obviously, and client frustration is really expensive. With our service, we block the malware distribution vectors, the botnet command and control servers, and of course phishing sites in an appropriate content, and we do this without any proxies, 100% on the DNS layer, um, and because we really built out this global network and used DNS delivery with zero added latency. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been talking a lot in this conference. Um, our service also covers workers, whether they're on and off network, and what's really cool is it also protects BYOD and unmanaged devices. This is important because if somebody comes in with an infected device, um, that can spread over the LAN, that can cause damage, and you want to make sure that anybody who comes on the network, starts connecting to network resources, also has security coverage. We block 80 million queries to malicious domains per day and discover over 100,000 threats every day. And this is all without the human intervention. This is with the learning machines that do it 24 seven with live data feeds updating every couple of seconds. So how do you make money off of this? Well, web filtering can be used as an add on, but in order to get the most revenue from this add on, you need to do per computer granularity. So you can say the boss is unfiltered and it needs to be easy to use. Our service, 60 categories, blacklist, whitelist, and of course the block page is customized with your logo, your copy. Additionally, the BYOD and guest filtering, although the guests are not given specific identity, they are covered, so you have full coverage in their office and we have great reporting and monitoring with real time. One of our customers talked to me yesterday, they're now selling us as a monitoring service. So they're not even actually selling the filtering, but their customers love the ability uh, to log into the dashboard, see the reports in real time, and be able to yell down the hall, hey Bob, get off Sports Illustrated and get back to work. That's what they're paying for, and they're charging a very nice markup over our service for the end customers to be able to do that. The management really loves it. Easy to manage. So everything is through the web console and it's a multi-tenant console. So the structure is the MSP and in the web console, you manage all of the policies, all of the settings um, and the structure is MSP, customer organization, and then customer policies and identities such as networks or agents. <coughs> On the retention side, of course, improved uptime helps dramatically. That's really important. But, okay, you get a customer on, malware is no longer a problem. Next question is, why am I paying for this additional layer of protection when it's not a problem? So we help you with value reports, the how many infections have you prevented, how much have we contained, <coughs> how many sites have we blocked, so on and so forth and also give you insights into network usage. 
So what are the top sites they're going to? All of these kinds of things. And we do it through ConnectWise integration as well as our dashboard. What this enables your sales team to do is pull this up and go, hey, I'm seeing that we've blocked 150 malware infections for you. That's what you're paying for the security fees for. But I'm also seeing that Netflix is like your third most popular domain. You guys have a six megabit DSL line. Uh, that's gotta be a terrible experience. Do you want me to block it for you? Do you want me to go through an upgrade on your network? Or do you, the boss, want me to block it for everybody but you so you have great quality and the rest of the office is, is prevented? <laughs> you can have that conversation. Uh, you can have the conversation of planning the next upgrade cycle. And of course, you're gonna get beautiful detailed reports inside of our system, but this is to enable the entire organization to be that virtual CIO, to be the trusted consultant to your customers. The, your question on deployment. So the two most popular deployment methods for MSPs, one, network level provisioning. So point DNS to us on the firewall, port 53 is limited only to us, and then punch in the public IP address in our web console. And now everybody on that network is protected, but all the reports are only network-wide. You don't have the granularity. In order to get that granularity and cover people when they leave the network, we have a lightweight agent. By lightweight, I mean two megs. Um, already got scripts written for lab tech, ASEA, enable. Um, it runs as a service. What it does is it embeds a unique computer ID in each DNS packet, also splits DNS for your AD servers versus what goes out to the cloud, and it enforces that it's always in use so your users are always protected. And on the business side, we've been working with MSPs for years. It's the fastest growing segment of our business, and really based on feedback from MSPs, we've built our program to be friendly to your business model with volume pricing. So in our multi-tenant console, you have a thousand users uh, that you've licensed from us. That means all thousand of those get the discounted 1,000 user price, and you can split up those seats as you please. Seven user organization here, 143 there, very easy to set up, and we make it simple for you to manage them in there, along with monthly billing and that console that I have a screenshot of here. So um, up above, you see I've got those 450 seats, got them all assigned. Let's say uh, Neha's Gnomes goes out of business, and I now need to free up those seats. I hit the little X, delete that organization, delete all the identities, I get those seats back, and now when I sell my next customer, I can put them back in use just by hitting the add new customer. We don't wanna know your customer's address. We don't wanna know anything about them. Just put in the label so that you can recognize which part of the, uh, of the, of the web console is their identities, their reports, and their settings. Thank you very much. I'll stick around to answer any more questions. Very appreciate your time.